Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a really good video for you today. I've been asked to update everybody on the Jared Fogel case. For years, I ate fried food and burgers that looked like this. And I looked like this. Then I found Subway restaurants. The Jared Fogel case is a, a pretty sad case if you ask me. He was the Subway representative who ended up abusing very young girls and he ended up going to prison. He's now in FCI Englewood, California, and he is serving a 15-year sentence. I often wonder about cases like this and somebody in power like that. At what point is enough enough? I think he deserves more time. I think he got away a little bit cheap on this one, and I'll tell you why. Let me give you a little bit about Jared Fogle before we start. But before I start, please check me out on YouTube member programs. Please check me out on Patreon, Discord, we have so much coming up, everybody. We got the cigar launch coming up in a month. We have the giveaway at thatbenz.com slash giveaway. That's thatbenz.com slash giveaway. Check it out. All you gotta do is subscribe to both of my YouTube channels, sign up for a newsletter. You can win a cruise for two here in November. Uh, we also have the cigar launch coming in about uh, three weeks now. So it, three, maybe three and a half, whatever it is, it's October 1st, and I'm really excited. It's kind of excited because it's my birthday month. Uh, my birthday's October 3rd, and, and I'm excited, I really am. This is something I have been looking forward to for a long time. Well, I decided to do this video because a lot of people ask me to do this video, and here's why I'm really doing it. You all know my stance on child predators. Uh, they're the low of the low, the scum of the scum and uh, it, it pisses me off. Quite frankly, it just pisses me off and what goes on uh, in our system. You know, when I was in prison, my mom said, I ended up getting four 12-year sentences for robbing jewelry stores. Didn't hurt anybody in a robbery, but I got four 12-year sentences. And my mom used to say, you know, listen, son, you, 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 sh you deserved your time. You, you were a criminal and you deserved it. But why do some child molesters get less time than you? Why is that? I have no idea and I will never understand that because they are ruining lives at a, at a rate people, people can't even understand. Listen, when you start abusing children whose brains aren't developed and, and, and a whole bunch of stuff, it's sad. Now, I often tell people, you know, I'm a very open individual, very open towards uh, drugs and whatever it is, but it has to be adults. That's number one. It has to be adults. I am very big on that and, and I'll never stop being big on that. What you want to do in your own home is great, but as long as it doesn't have to do with children, doesn't have to do with hurting elderly or something of that nature or hurting anybody. So I'm kind of like in this case, I'm a little bit, uh, uh, got mad when I started doing all my research on the case and I'm, I'm gonna go over a little bit of it. Jared Scott Fogel was born in 1977 an American former spokesperson for Subway. Fogel appeared in Subway's advertising campaigns from 2000 to 2015. He went away in 2015 uh, until an FBI investigation led him to being convicted of child sex tourism and possessing child pornography. You know, listen, I think most of us watch porn, uh, take pictures of ourselves and selfies with people and your, your partners and everything else. And I'm all, hey, listen, if you're an adult, you do it. You're an adult, I get it. But I don't know what possesses somebody to, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, what turns them on to a child. It really boggles my mind what turns people on to a child, especially with the ages of these young, men, uh, young people. While a student at Indiana University, Fogel lost 245 pounds between 98 and 99 in about a year. Wow, that's amazing. Having frequented a Subway's restaurant as part of his diet plan. He was hired to help advertisers at the company and the following year, Fogel's popularity led him to being featured in over 300 commercials during him, his 15 years with Subway alongside other media appearances. Allegations of Fogel having inappropriate relations with minors began in 2007. You would think Subway would have caught on to this. I mean, come on. I mean, I, it, it boggles my mind. But did not gain traction until 2015 to that when the FBI uncovered that he, he received child pornography from an associate. Pleaded guilty to the child sex tourism and child pornography charges the same year. Fogel was sentenced to 15 years and eight months 
in federal prison. He is currently incarcerated at Federal Correctional Institution, Anglewood. Now, that's a low security uh, facility. He wouldn't make it 10 fucking minutes in a penitentiary. And I mean that, 10 minutes in a penitentiary, this guy Fogel wouldn't make it. I'm gonna go over his child uh, pornography investigation and arrest. In 2007, Fogel came to the attention of state and federal law enforcement agencies after Sarasota, Florida, right here in Florida, a journalist and radio host, uh, Rochelle Herman Walrod, told the Sarasota Police Department he made lewd comments to her about middle school age girls. She had met Fogel at a local a middle school for a health event as he was in Sarasota for a speaking tour. She made recordings of Fogel remarks and saved text messages between them and then went to the FBI, which, you know what, good for her. I'm glad she did that. She, In my mind, that's enough to, to listen, I don't know how Subway kept this guy on. I don't know what they knew at the time either. The FBI were agents asked her to record her conversations with him and for the next Four years, she recorded him making several remarks about having had sex with underage girls and asking her to install a webcam in her children's room so he could watch them. Ultimately, the FBI could not pursue a case against Vogel using the recording because they needed more substantive evidence against him. What more substantive evidence do you need? First of all, there is no way somebody could talk to me and say to me, to my child, hey, I want to install a webcam in your child's room without me flipping the fuck out and beating this guy half the fucking death. Sorry, that's just me. And I know I, I probably get a little bit angry and stuff like this because as people know, I was abused as a young child myself. So, you know, you go one or two ways. You become an abuser or you become a uh, very, very adamant against that kind of stuff, which I am. During the investigation into Russell Taylor's child pornography, Operations Another Person, authorities discovered that Taylor had traded sexually explicit photos and videos of child children, some as young as six years old. With Fogel, Taylor, who was sentenced to 27 years in prison, was later named as an unindicted co-defender. They do that when the guy's either telling on somebody or something of that nature in the FBI's case against Fogel. What we found in Russell Taylor's home and on his computer led us to Jared Fogel, said Tim Horty, a spokesman for the uh, Department of Justice. On July 7th, 2015, the FBI and Indiana State Police, where he's from, investigators raided Fogel's Zoinville, Indiana residents and arrested him on distribution and receipt of child pornography charges. Computers and other electronic equipment were removed from his home. I'm, I'm telling you, I get the fucking chills, people. I really, really do. Uh, the same day, spokesman for Subway announced that the company and Fogel have mutually agreed to suspend their business relationships. Mutually agreed to suspend their uh, business relations. How about you fucking fired them? How about you don't stand for child pornography? How about we made a big mistake by not following up on this man? Uh, and again, I don't know exactly how that went. Subway removed all references to Frogel from its website. Following Fogel's arrest, the FBI also subpoenaed a series of text messages made in 2008 between Fogel and Subway franchisee Cindy Mills with whom he was having a sexual relationship at the time. In these messages, Fogel talked about sexually abusing children ranging in the ages from nine to 16, told her to sell herself for sex on Craigslist, and asked her to arrange for him to have sex with her 16-year-old cousin. Man, I'm getting the fucking chills. The more I read this, and I read it already. Mill's lawyer said that she had uh, alerted Subway corporate management about that text messages but they had responded that because Fogel was not a Subway employee, there was no violation. Subway representatives said they had no record of Mills' allegations. There is enough here in my mind, obviously give him, they gave him 15 years and eight months in prison in Englewood. You know, what they did to Whitey Bulger, which I have no qualms about, is uh, take Whitey Bulger and put him in a federal prison and he lasted, I just read a new article that he lasted like 12 minutes. 12 minutes. 
whatever it was, 12 hours, 12 minutes. Whitey Bulger didn't last because he was a snitch. And a guy named Freddie Geese and a couple others, they killed him. And now they're up on, on charges on that. And I think the federal government messed that one up as well. But that's a whole nother video. This video is about full on what do I think is happening to him. Now, sadly, a low facility prison has a lot of child molesters, uh, child porn people. In fact, my brother David, you all know here, was in Laredo. And Laredo was a low facility at the time. And they tried to house a child molester in the same room as my brother. My brother wouldn't have it. He ended up beating the guy with a lock because he told him, get this fucking guy out of my cell. And they wouldn't. And my brother ended up uh, beating him pretty badly. And he ended up coming to a prison, prison of Allenwood. He was transferred back to a medium. He left the medium, which was Jessup, Georgia, when his points went down. And he ended up going to Laredo. Laredo had a lot of child molesters. A lot of these low federal facilities have child molesters and snitches. And the reason they do is one, because they're not a violent facility per se. I mean, it can get violent. Any prison can get violent, but they're not a violent prison per se. Believe it or not, I, there's no way I never was at a low facility. There isn't a chance in fucking China that I could fucking go to a low facility and be housed with child molesters. Listen, don't get me wrong. I am sure I, I made it to a medium facility and I'm sure they were undercover, what they call child molesters, and people who do certain crimes that, that, that to me is just, uh, I hate to say unforgivable, because I hate to be like that kind of a person. But when you are having sex with a nine-year-old and have pictures of a six-year-old, I don't know what fucking twisted demen dementia you have. You all know me as a very open individual who is very forgiving, non-judgmental. But when it comes to child pornography or child sex, I am sitting here telling you, I don't care what you do as an adult, whether it's uh, group sex, gay porn, straight porn, bi porn, I don't care. Have fun. You're an adult. Nobody should tell you what to do in your own home with adults. Did you hear me? With adults. Once the person comes of 18, and I still think that's young, uh, but once a person comes of age, Obviously, they can make better choices. They listen, they put people in the military at 18. So you hope people can make better choices and not engage in whatever sex they have or be able to defend themselves. You see, what happens is with a guy like this Fogel guy, he's powerful, he has a lot of money, he's manipulative, obviously, and I don't know the level of force. But what, what turns in a fucking brain of a person to enjoy a picture of a pre-pubescent, pre -pubi pre I think that's the word, pre-pubescent uh, child. Listen, I have a granddaughter and I have a grandson and my granddaughter is six and my granddaughter is a four. I can't even imagine what I would do if somebody did something like that to my child, my, my grandchildren or my children. I often tell people that one of the biggest fears I had in my life was when I was in prison and I had a 15 month old daughter and a seven year old son. And what would get me up uh, thinking and get me riled up, if you want to call it that, is something happening to my children at the time, who were seven years old and 15 months old, and even as they were getting older, eight, and nine, and 10, and one, two, three. What I would do if something like that happened? I can only say this. I guess I'm lucky I was never put in that position because I probably wouldn't be here on YouTube. I uh, probably wouldn't be around. Now, I often tell young people, don't let these people control your life. Don't let something that happened to you. I was abused at say, uh, 11 years old and it took a long, long time uh, for me to come to grips with that, to not blame everybody in the world, not blame myself. And I had to get over it and I had to become stronger for it. And I always believe in when people have some adversity in their life, they have to take that adversity and become stronger for it. Uh, maybe teach some other people about it. I just, at this case, this case has got me pretty hot and bothered about uh, of what happened in this case, it really does. I don't want to harp on it, but Jared Fogle, sadly, is probably living a normal life in prison, as normal as you can. Obviously, uh, I hope there was fines and stuff that made this man a, uh, 
a pariah. He's going to be a sex offender when he does get out. He went to prison in 2015, so he's in there approximately seven years. Uh, so he's got about seven years left. So you can look for his release about 2029. If I'm around, I will uh, be reporting about that as well. But I don't want people to think that, uh, you know, I, I'm an unforgiving person. In this case, I really am. Because I, I don't find justification in any way, shape, or form. There's no way a six-year-old or a nine-year-old, supposedly he had sex with which the lady had text messages with can manipulate him into sex. I often talk about uh, uh, abuse and I often talk about a 19 year old young man and a 17 year old uh, young girl. And you know, that's technically a, ch uh, a sex crime, but I don't consider it a sex crime and none of us in prison did. But there's also a code in the federal system that if you had sex with somebody under 12, you get a different code and there was no excuse whatsoever, no shape or form that that can be justified in any way, shape or form. And I wouldn't, I wanted to bring up the Fogel cause I got emails, what is happening to him and, and is he getting abused? Is he uh, uh, having a tough time? From what I hear, and I do have contacts on the inside, no, he's I guess living a, if you want to call prison a normal life, or a normal life of a, of a convict. God forbid that man gets in some kind of trouble and goes up to a medium or a penitentiary. Forget a penitentiary. If he goes up to a penitentiary, he doesn't last a day, not one day in prison, he does not last. So with that said, with my contacts that I do have, and I do have contacts in prisons all over the country, I'm not hearing the thing. Listen, I don't, I, it, it's such a torn uh, topic for me because of being abused and seeing him and, uh, you know, I have a, a, a young man, it's his family, who's a uh, fire medic, a fire paramedic, and he saw infants being abused. And, and, and that's gotta be the most traumatizing thing in the world. Uh, innocence has to start somewhere, and I think it should start with our youth. Uh, you know, a country should be judged on how it treats its elderly, its infirmed, and also its incarcerated. With that said, everybody, please make good choices. Please comment below. I'm going to be reading these comments. This is, this is a topic that can get to me, but I need to do that. Uh, it's my own therapy. And I really want to thank you guys for watching. Please pass it on. Please have a great day. Make good choices. And I'll see you Thursday.